In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It's a great feast today that we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. All of us are called to be saints, uh, to be filled with the happiness of Christ, which ultimately changes our entire lives. So we give thanks to God for the gift of those who are canonized among us and perhaps the many unnamed, unrecognized saints that perhaps gather with us this morning. We give thanks to God for the gift of family and faith and for word and sacraments that gives us strength during these troubled times. We acknowledge our struggle with selfishness and sin. We ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Together we confess. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every race, nation, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God and explained, amen, blessing and glory wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing the white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. <clears throat> Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Deep in our hearts is a longing for happiness. Longing to be happy is probably never far from our thoughts. Perhaps some of the things we think will bring us happiness are illusions. They're not true. And we're oftentimes invited to learn through our experience where true happiness comes from. But I think all of us can agree that deep within our hearts is a longing to be happy. It's often the motivation for most of what we do. Perhaps the career that we choose, the jobs that we accept, or perhaps the jobs that we refuse. The reasons why we get married, and in some cases, why some people choose to get divorced. Isn't it the reasons why so many people want to have kids, buy a house? And a little bit more, less important, the reason why we like to go to Broadway, to the, to the movies, to go out hiking in nature. Isn't it the reason why we like to gather with family and with friends? And so many of us, we're so preoccupied with our financial security, isn't it? In some small way, we desire to be happy, and we think financial security will be a source of that. It's why so many people play the lotto. And isn't it the reason why 
we take our faith seriously, why we commit as a community to listen to God's word and to be together and try to live in accordance with God's plan for my life. Isn't it because in some small way we're longing to be happy? And while we pursue happiness, and the Constitution of the United States says we all have the right to the pursuit of happiness, often we don't reflect on the very different levels of happiness that we can sometimes be looking for. There is the happiness that comes to us through our bodies, through our senses, through the material world. The happiness of sharing a nice meal with friends and family, a nice glass of wine or a nice cup of tea with friends, the happiness of receiving a hug from someone we love, or watching a beautiful sunset, or hearing an incredible piece of music that really moves us. And there are so many experiences of happiness that come to us through our embodied exist existence as human beings. And this level of happiness is real and important and necessary. But does not happiness go deeper? There's the happiness that we experience also within ourselves when we try to discover that God has given us certain talents. And we try to develop these talents with care. We, we study, we get degrees, we in fact work so hard in order to get promotions. And all these experiences of noticing our gifts and develop, develop, developing them and sharing them, these experiences of achievement and success also give us a certain level of happiness. And this level of happiness is real as well. But does not happiness go deeper still? What about the experience when we see that life is not just about me? Finally, we begin to realize my life's not just about me. And we begin to grow in a certain sense of solidarity with other people and to develop a certain level of compassion for people among us, especially those in most need. It's that happiness that comes to us when we decide to volunteer our time or our talent or our treasure to make somebody's else, somebody else's life a little bit better. It's the happiness that comes when we try to contribute to the common good to make our world a better place. All of us who have sacrificed in love for our spouse, for our children, for our church, for the poor, don't we on some level know this happiness to be real? And it is real, this level of happiness, of growing in compassion and solidarity. But is there still not a deeper level of happiness that we long for, that we need to discover and treasure, which will ultimately bring us to the fullness of life and happiness? And this deepest level of happiness, which I would like to call the happiness of salvation, of knowing ourselves eternally loved by the Eternal Father, it's the happiness of the saints. I think sometimes we think of the saints as dour people, not happy, but my picture of the saints is that they're very happy people because they have been transformed by the deepest level of happiness, the mystery of God's love and mercy. I think it's this level of happiness that is our destiny as Catholics, and it allows us to enjoy all those other levels of happiness in a deeper way. The gospel that I read today, we all are very familiar with it, the gospel of the Beatitudes, and it's Jesus' own path to happiness. Happy, it says blessed, but the other word that we can use in the translation is happy. Happy are the poor, the poor in spirit. Happy are those people who mourn, who are meek, who hunger for righteousness. He's not talking about happiness of smiley faces. In fact, the Beatitudes are not about feelings at all. The, path, the Beatitudes are a path that brings us to share in the very happiness of Christ. And when we are grounded in the happiness of Christ, we may be in the midst of mourning, we may be in the midst of persecution, we may be in the midst of suffering, but we're still growing in God's happiness, even among those, in, those experiences. Happy are you who are poor in spirit. You people who know that you need something greater than yourself to be happy. You need the mystery of God. Happy are you people who mourn because you have loved deeply. The only way to not mourn is to choose not to love. 
Happy are you who choose to love and, though, and, though, and, and thus through that experience the loss and the mourning that comes with it sometimes. Happy are you people who, are, who choose to be meek, who because you're so grounded in God's love, you don't need to dominate other people. You don't need to win every argument. You can be slightly meek in allowing another person to have their own opinion. Happy are you who are beginning to move beyond your own personal happiness. You seek the righteousness of right relationships and justice in the world. And the clean of heart, and we can go on all these different characteristics of the happiness of the saints that are the happiness of the Beatitudes. But I just want to mention two other causes of our happiness in Christ. And they come from the first and second reading. The first reading talks about this great multitude of saints and they're all, it's filled with people from every race, language, and tongue, and from every generation. But they're united in two ways, in praising God for the gift of Christ, and also all of them have washed their robes in the blood of Christ. And we know that the deepest truth is that the blood ultimately doesn't wash cloth clean. But what the blood of Christ does, it, it washes our hearts and our minds clean. It's what ultimately heals and makes us whole, washing away all the burdens that we carry of guilt and self-hatred and doubt and setting our hearts free to love in return. And that beautiful blessing and source of happiness that comes to us in that second reading, that we are God's children now, not in some future time. And... We are God's children now, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's another great source of the happiness of the saints. Today we do celebrate this great feast, All Saints Day, and we think sometimes that the saints are are only the ones that are canonized. In fact, all of us are called to be saints. And in, and in fact, there is only one sadness in this world at the end of life. It's that sadness is that we didn't respond deeply to the call to be holy men and women and young people. You know, these are difficult times for us and for our country. And what I think our country needs more in our world, not just our country, but particularly our world at this time in our history, is that we need more people filled with the happiness of the saints those people filled with the happiness of knowing themselves saved by the mystery of God's love, those people who have found in themselves this deep happiness to serve others, to be in solidarity, especially with the needy, to really develop your gifts, to really allow your gifts to be developed and shared, not so much that people will praise you, but that this world will become a better place. And also just that that deep basic happiness of being embodied human beings in the world enjoying the gift of family and friends and a nice meal or a nice piece of music, all those wonderful things that can be a source of happiness, but our deepest happiness, the ones that we're longing for above all other happinesses is this longing to be a community of faith, healed of all division in the love of Christ. You know, and if you ever get a chance to go to Los Angeles, you'll see on the sides of the church, it's a big church, the cathedral, you'll see a procession of saints, those who are canonized, the wonderful saints that mark our tradition as Catholics, the St. Thomases and Teresas and all the wonderful saints that are part of our tradition, but they also fill in human, just other Catholics who are a part of this procession of being called to be a saint. So let's continue our liturgy now, grateful to God for the gift of the saints, but also for this call to be happy as the saints are happy in Christ. We we stand now to profess the faith that sets us free in Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The saints in heaven intercede for us with God who hears every prayer. That the worldwide church will always strengthen and persevere as exemplified by all the unnamed saints who stayed true to their calling. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer the violence of war be blessed with lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who grieve the loss of a loved one be blessed with the fullness of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. For those who carry new life and those who are searching for a reason to enjoy it, that they may be comforted in the hope and inspiration life brings as well as its joy and responsibility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather at this feast be blessed with the unity in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, Arthur Artie Brombeck, Rocco Mastronardi, Jameson Swanky, Maria Gallagher, and those listed in the bulletin, that the Lord will restore them to health. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. For those that have died in the peace of Christ, Baby Matthias Morales, Victor Versace, Louis Del Valle, Warren Wilson, Jose Valley, Catherine Brittis, and especially for George Vaz, that they may be welcomed into the company of the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Holy, immortal God, you preserve your people in time of trial. Hear our prayers, which we join to those of the saints. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed walk 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we now acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ, be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us How truly blessed we are, for behold, in our midst the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed, happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, but I am I not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed.
Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God.
before the closing prayer, we have a, didn't get sister's name, poor Claire, sister of the poor Claire's, who will speak for us a little bit. I think she's going to speak in Spanish. And then we're going to have, is it, Grace, you're going to, you're going to translate, right? After that. And after that, we'll have a few. So, bienvenida, hermana, para compartir un poquito sobre, sobre su comunidad. So, Deverendo Padre Kelly, queridos hermanos coterráneos de la ciudad de Azogues, tengan un buen día. Reciban un fraterno saludo de paz y pie de parte de la comunidad de las hermanas Clarisas que estamos en la ciudad de Azogues, provincia del Cañar. Les traemos muchas gracias y bendiciones de nuestra Madre Santísima de la Nube, Madre del ecuatoriano ausente, Madre del emigrante. Nuestro monasterio está consagrado a la Santísima Virgen de la Nube. Ustedes cuentan con bastantes oraciones de nuestra comunidad. Y también les traigo saludos de sus familiares, de sus amigos, ya que tenemos mucha relación con ellos. Ellos nos visitan en el monasterio y nos manifiestan mucho su preocupación eh, sobre todo por la salud de ustedes, nos encomiendan siempre en las oraciones. Estamos muy agradecidas por esas donaciones que ustedes nos hacen llegar y pues agradecemos infinitamente, primeramente a Dios, luego a las autoridades eclesiásticas que nos han permitido llegar a este bonito lugar donde ustedes están, donde nos sentimos muy acogidas y agradecidas sobre todo con el reverendo Padre Esteban Sánchez que nos ha hecho esta invitación y ha hecho posible para que nosotros estemos aquí en compañía con ustedes. Vamos a estar aquí por 15 días. Y pues luego queremos ofrecerles la comidita que hemos preparado. Les ofrecemos mote pillo, mote sucio, hornado, sancocho, eh, también morocho, café y leche, coladita morada con guavita de pan, patacones con queso. Eh, todo esto ustedes van a colaborar y nosotros también les estamos ofreciendo las cremas faciales para las manchas, para la limpieza de la piel y también para dolores musculares. Es, los fondos que se recaudarán serán para construir, avanzar con la construcción de las celditas de nuestro monasterio. Eh, lo hemos estado construyendo, pero debido a la pandemia, eh, nosotros nos subsistimos eh, anteriormente con la venta de comida en el Santuario de San Francisco, pero lo hemos cerrado debido a esta situación que llevamos, pero estamos siempre agarradas de la mano de Dios, estamos al servicio de Él y de todos ustedes y confiamos de que esta es la manera que nosotros vamos a avanzar próximamente para construir las celditas que nos faltan en nuestro monasterio. Agradezco de todo corazón a todos ustedes por esta ayuda que nos dan para nosotros avanzar con la obra y les seguimos encomendando, cuentan con nuestras oraciones en todo momento y les tenemos en nuestro corazón. Un bonito día a todos y nuevamente gracias y bendiciones para todos ustedes. Un buen domingo. Gracias. Good morning, everyone. I'm not going to repeat that word for word, but Sister Naomi wants to thank everyone from the bottom of her heart. She feels very blessed to be here with all of us. They are in the midst of building their new convent, and due to the pandemic, they had some financial difficulties because they could no longer sell their wares and foods in Ecuador. So she would greatly appreciate it if you could all go and participate across the street and help them fund the finishing of the building of their convent. She said, God bless everyone, and she has everyone in, their, in their, her prayers. Thank you. Before the closing prayers, there are just a couple other announcements. There is going to be a blood drive here on Thursday, November 5th, between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the FWH. What would that be? 
You guys know where that is, the FWH? Okay. If you don't ask, where is it? FWH. What does that mean? Any, say it again. Okay. Any, well, it's at the WAW, at the FWH. You can check that out where that, that's where the blood drive is going to be. The Mass Intentions book for 2021 is now open and in the, and in the rectory you can make, make Mass Intentions for next year. All Souls Day envelopes are in the back of the church. And finally, tomorrow is All Souls Day when we remember our, our beloved dead. Uh, and there will be a 9 a.m. Mass tomorrow. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. Mass will take place uh, for All Souls Day. Please stand and let us pray. We adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints. We implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you on this All Saints Day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth now, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you.